Hello everyone, my name is Christina Parpula and I'm going to present a joint work with Professor Alex Karagrigoriou regarding a distribution free phase one control chart especially designed for individual observations. This is the outline of the talk and let me here discuss in brief about the significance of control charts which it is well known that form the core of statistical process control. The application of these control charts is usually implemented into two phases, phase one and uh, phase two. However, most of the existing non-parametric control charts are designed for phase two monitoring and those for phase one analysis could only be applied with subgrouped observations. As we can see, little has been done in developing non-parametric phase one control charts, especially for individual observations that are prevalent in non-manufacturing applications. So here, the main goal is to construct such non-parametric control charts based on a change point detection scheme. The main tool in this methodology is that we try to detect an unusual trend that marks a switch from an in-control to an out-of-control uh, state. This is the statistical framework. Let x1, x2, xm represent the observations that assume to be independent with an unknown but common cumulative distribution function, f0x. This corresponds to the in-control state whereas the out-of-control state could be described by a multiple chains point model as presented here in relation 1, where f0, x, f1, x, f kappa, x denote the unknown CDF, which at one or several times may shift in position, and tau1, tau2, tau kappa represent the shift times which are also assumed to be unknown. It is worth noting here that uh, model 1 includes a lot of out-of-control uh, situations, and some typical out-of-control patterns are presented here in uh, figure 1. So we need to verify the hypothesis system that the process was in control against the alternative that the process was out of control and this system requires the specification of a nominal false alarm probability. Here, the typical distinction between parametric and non-parametric test takes place. Only a non-parametric procedure can en enable the experimenter to control this false alarm probability without any knowledge about the specific distribution from which the individual observations uh, are drawn. So we need to execute three steps in order to achieve level changes detection. First of all, we need uh, to design uh, the test statistics for testing the null hypothesis against the alternatives as described here in relation three where mu0, mu1, mu kappa are the mean values which are assumed to be unknown. Uh, then we run a forward recursive segmentation algorithm which starts assuming that we have no change points and then proceeds in kappa capital successive stages. Here kappa capital denotes the maximum number of hypothetical change points to search for. At the beginning of stage kappa, the interval 1 to m is partitioned into kappa sum intervals each having a length greater or equal to L min. Here, L minimum represents the minimum number of successive observations allowed between two change points. At stage kappa, one of these sub is split, adding a new potential change point, which is selected, maximizing here equation 4, of course, conditionally on the results of the previous stages. So in this way, we can compute the control statistic, but the research issue which arises is that we don't know their in-control distribution function. So what can we do? We can reorder the xi from the smallest to larger, largest, and then um, uh, we know that under uh, the null hypothesis, uh, relation 5 here holds. Note here that uh, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha m, this vector is a permutation of the associated order statistic and it does not uh, depend on the in-control unknown uh, distribution function. Uh, so in this way, we could compute the associated p-value based on the proportion of permutations. However, this number uh, can be extremely large, and for this reason, we followed the permutation procedure as described by Capici and Mazzarotto, appropriately treated for our case since we deal with a sequence of individual uh, observations. So we fix the number of random permutations, this is denoted by L, and we compute the test statistics for each permutation. Let us now denote with tau kappa L tilde the value of the kappa statistic obtained from the L permutation. Then we could compute the overall control statistics through standardization and aggregation, as shown here in relation 6 and relation 7. 
So here W denotes the statistic obtained from the original sample of our observations, and WL tilde corresponds to the statistic obtained from each permutation. We then can compute the significance level as the proportion of permutations under which the statistic value exceeds or is equal to the statistic obtained from the original sample of our observation. Here, some details are given about the tuning parameters following the suggestions of the work of Capici and Mazzarotto, and we then compare the developed technique, denoted from now and on as RSP, with a conventional SUHA, the X chart, a chart which is based on the generalized likelihood ratio of Sullivan and Woodall, but the control limits here are computed by permutation, which means that the resulting adjusted uh, GLR test-based chart is actually distribution-free. And we also consider, uh, identically to the previously described technique, the adjusted GLR, but now uh, we consider a preliminary rank transformation of the original data in order to probably achieve a better performance under a non-normal process. As for the simulation study, note that we compared both the in-control and out-of-control performances of the phase one charts. And as for the simulation settings, uh, we used uh, 300,000 Monte Carlo replications. We considered one change point location. We set the nominal false alarm probability to be equal to 0.005. And we considered two different sample sizes, M equals 50 and M equals 100. We considered also three different in-control distribution function, a standard normal distribution, a negative exponential distribution of mean one, and a student distribution with three degrees of freedom. And as for the out-of-control scenarios, note that we simulated and compared a range of process mean shifts, as described here in relation nine, where delta varies from 0.5 to three in units of standard deviation. So the first out-of-control scenario corresponds to a step change in the process mean, we consider three different patterns regarding the position of the change times, and this is very important since we don't know in advance when a transition between an in-control and an out-of-control state occurs, and in this way we specify the change point locations. Now, as for scenario two, uh, we assume that the mean shift follows a linear trend as described here in relation uh, 10. So table one presents the results for different in-control distribution. Observe that the X chart attains the specified false alarm probability values only under normality, which means under its design conditions, and only RSP technique succeeds to approximately guarantee the prescribed false alarm probability in all considered cases. As for the out-of-control scenario under a normal distribution, it is a little bit surprising here in the red circles that the X chart is even not as effective as its non-parametric counterparts, which uh, perform almost similarly and satisfactorily. And under exponential distribution, we observe that the x chart and the adjusted GLR show the lowest alarm probabilities, whereas RSP outperforms the R-adjusted GLR only when the change point occurs later in the sample. As for the student distribution, we observe again that the R-adjusted GLR and RSP techniques are the best overall performing charts. And as for scenario two, uh, we observe that the X chart remains ineffective in detecting a gradual mean shift compared to its non-parametric counterparts, even under a normal uh, distribution. So, in summary, we observe that the best chart is different under different distribution and shift patterns. For any given control chart, the alarm probability is higher if the sample size is larger and if the change point occurs in the middle of the sample than early or later in the sample except for the X chart. We observed also that the Schuchard X chart remains ineffective in all considered cases, even under uh, a normal distribution. And in this later case, under normality, the adjusted GLR chart seems to be the best overall performing chart, whereas under a non-normal process, the R-adjusted GLR and RSP techniques uh, perform almost similarly and are viable non-parametric alternatives for phase one analysis. We then proceed with a real case study for the timely detection of epidemics. In particular, we studied the evolution of the influenza-like illness syndrome, which is a major public health concern due to its potential for widespread transmission, with ILI also representing a potential pandemic risk. So we analyzed two-year time series data for Greece from 2014 to 2016. Here are the results for the first period. We observed that we have 
a two-step sift out of control pattern. And as for the second period under study, we observe that we have a three-step sift uh, out of control pattern. So in this way, we estimated the values of the time varying process mean nu i hat for the first and second period. And the research question which arises here is that are these the actual change point? Are these the actual epidemics? Unfortunately, we will never be able to give such an answer because we will never be able to know when an epidemic actually started. However, we compared this change point with those derived after executing the standard CDC and ECDC flu detection algorithm. This is Surflix model denoted here by M11 and an extended form of it denoted here by M23. Here are the results for the signal start and then weeks for the epidemics. We observe that similar to M11 and M23, RSP technique succeeds to identify the same change points the same signal start weeks for the epidemics, thus it compares favorably to the gold standard approaches. So, some concluding remarks here. Uh, based on the results derived from the empirical and simulation study, RSP was found to have several appealing properties. First of all, is a distribution-free procedure. Second, it can detect single and multiple level changes. Moreover, it can be easily extended for combined level and scale changes detection if necessary. And uh, RSP was found to offer a satisfactory in-control and out-of-control performance. Note here that even RSP was not the best scheme throughout all possible out-of-control scenarios, it was never too far from the best. However, a drawback of this technique is that RSP as its competitors requires the independence of the observations, at least in the in-control state. Thus, more research is still needed to account for autocorrelation. Also, uh, it would be of interest to investigate how to extend this technique to the case of multivariate uh, observations. Here are some references regarding this uh, work. And at this point, I would like to thank you all for your attention, and I will be happy to take any question during the conference. Thank you very much.